We don't care about energy. In fact, we don't give a damn about energy. I'll gladly put French fries or milkshakes or orange juice in the fuel tank of my truck if when I press the accelerator, I think it's going to give me the motive power that I want. I don't care how the uh, lighting power or uh, amplification power, electric power in this room is being generated. I, I don't care about what fuel it is. I care that the energy is flowing and that we can use it. Energy and power are not the same things. They are frequently confused. And if you remember nothing else, remember this. Energy and power are not the same thing. Energy is the ability to do work. Power is the rate at which work gets done. Energy is a sum. Energy is a gallon of gasoline. Energy is a thousand barrels of oil. Power is a rate. Rates are more telling than sums. We're in Texas. You could have a million barrels of oil in the ground. It's not worth anything. It's worth effectively nothing unless you can make it flow. Energy flow is what power is. We have to make energy flow, and if we can't make it flow, it isn't worth anything to us. Rates are more telling than sums. So why do we care about power? Because the more power we have, the more work we can do. Power is the rate at which work gets done. A, an oil well that produces 10 barrels of oil per day, per day, right, because that's a rate. It's energy over time. One joule per second equals one watt. A well that produces 10 barrels of oil per day is 10 times as powerful as a well that produces one barrel per day. Okay, so power density. What is power density? It's a measure of the rate of energy flow that can be harnessed or generated from a given volume, area, or mass. This is the physics class that you should have had in high school and didn't. You have volumetric power density, which is watts per cubic meter, aerial power density, also sometimes called surface power density, which is uh, watts per square meter, which is my focus today, and then gravimetric power density, which is watts per kilogram. Okay, so now you know what power density is. Well, why does it matter? Because it determines the shape and the size of our energy and power networks. So what is the iron law of power density? In preparing for this talk, and I was flattered to be invited, I thought, okay, I've got to boil this entire physics class down to 10 minutes. What is the iron law of power density? It is the lower the power density, the higher the resource intensity. When you start with a system that has low power density, you have to add other inputs. Steel, concrete, land, fertilizer, copper. That's a problem because now what we are, this, the, 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 the meme of the moment and there is a tremendous amount of momentum behind this all renewable push, this electrify everything push, all designed to move our systems, our energy and power systems from high power density sources that are reliable and dispatchable to low power density sources that are not dispatchable and unreliable. I'd call it crazy, but it'd be an insult to the insane. Okay, so why do we care about our, the uh, power density and how to, a, a demonstration of the iron law of power density is looking at the iron law of power density in corn ethanol. Last year, Bloomberg did a great, report, a, a great piece, Dave Merrill did, pu published it last June. The land area footprint of corn ethanol is, is equal to two-thirds of all the land in the United States devoted to energy production is taken up by the corn ethanol scam an air land area larger than the state of Nebraska. Well, why is that? It's because the, the aerial power density in watts per square meter of corn ethanol is about one-tenth of a watt per square meter. Wind energy, I don't care where you put it, onshore, offshore, you're gonna hear from Bonnie Brady and Megan Lapp later today. They're experts on offshore wind and ardent opponents, as am I. I don't care where you put your wind turbine, the power density is one watt per square meter, period. Elvis has left the building. Solar is better, 10 watts per square meter, but there are, no, there are no competition for natural gas and nuclear. On a Marcellus shale, uh, shale gas pad, this data is from the Bureau of Economic Geology, thanks to Scott Tinker for giving this, this data, 1,900 watts per square meter. And that's after the gas produced from those shale gas wells is put through a combined cycle gas turbine with 35% efficiency. 
What we're seeing today in the oil and gas business is a shrinking of their footprints because it makes more economic sense. It also makes environmental sense. At the same time, the oil and gas industry is shrinking its footprint and doing multi-well multi pads because it makes more economic sense to have a smaller footprint. The, oil, the wind and solar industries are spreading out all across the countryside and they're meeting resistance left and right. The nuclear uh, industry, 2,000 watts per square meter. Why do we care about nuclear? Because the power density is unsurpassed and will never be surpassed by any other uh, energy or power source that we know of uh, today. The 2,000 watts per square meter is from the Indian Point nuclear plant in Buchanan, New York, which was criminally, prematurely shuttered in April of last year. Thanks to Governor Andrew Cuomo. See you later, you sorry bastard. <laughs> and from pressure, and from pressure from the Natural Resources Defense Council. What replaced the nuclear power plant? Gas fired generation and higher emissions in a state that wants to be a climate leader. Okay, so what's the other example of the iron law of power density? It's the wind energy business. I'm a longtime critic. Those people don't like me. I don't like them back. <laughs> to meet existing electricity demand in the United States, roughly 4,000 terawatt hours per year, with wind energy alone, you would need a land area of 900,000 square kilometers, roughly 350,000 square miles. It's twice the size of the state of California, which is interesting because you cannot build onshore wind in California. The local opposition is so great. Can't build it in New York, can't build it in Vermont either. All across the country, local communities are rejecting or restricting wind energy. You won't read about this in the New York Times, even though New York State is arguably the epicenter of the backlash against the wind business. This is a graphic I created. I've been following this for now seven years, documenting the, the rejections and restrictions of wind. They're happening from Maine to Hawaii. Latest count, 323 rejections in the United States since 2015. These numbers have never been, never been challenged by the wind industry, by the way, because they don't want to talk about these rejections. And these aren't being uh, you know, somehow uh, orchestrated by some national environmental groups. These are local people, a lot of them farmers, rural Americans, who are, are fighting to protect their neighborhoods, and damn well they should. Okay, so the iron law of power density and critical minerals, this is a key issue, ladies and gentlemen. I had a piece in the Wall Street Journal last month talking about this issue. The lower the power density, the higher the resource intensity. Look in, this is a screen grab from the International Energy Agency's report on critical minerals in May. I didn't make this graphic. It is, it, it's the IEA graphic. Look at offshore wind. Look at the critical mineral intensity of offshore wind. The newest offshore wind turbines require three tons of rare earth elements. Compare that to nuclear, coal, and natural gas. Far fewer inputs, why? The iron law of power density. The lower the power density, the higher the resource intensity. Okay, so who dominates critical minerals processing? China. Again, this is a screen grab from the International Energy Agency's report in May, and yet we hear nothing about this effectively from the Biden administration. Promotion of electric vehicles in their, their big rollout last month. Not a single word in the, in the White House press release about rare earth elements. China dominates this industry and they're consolidating their dominance. So what's the way forward? Natural gas to nuclear. I've been promoting this now for more than a dozen years. Why? High aerial power density, small footprints. I'm opposed to the wind industry for a lot of reasons. One is I'm an avid bird watcher, have been for 30 years. We're sacrificing our wildlife, our birds, and our bats for this idea about so-called clean energy, clean power. It's a fiction. Thank you, thank you. Small footprints, affordable, low carbon, no carbon, uh, and the U.S. should lead in both. The Chinese and the Russians are stealing a march on us when it comes to nuclear power. This is the advertising portion of the program. It's going to last 30 seconds. I have a new film out. I have uh, some great supporters here in the room. Chris Wright, Bud Brigham helped me produce this film. I went to India, Iceland, Lebanon, Puerto Rico, looking at the world through the lens of electricity. You can watch it on all the major streaming platforms. It's free on the Roku channel. I have six books, six, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, you don't have to read it. You just have to buy it. <laughs> and if you buy it on your Kindle, I make a better royalty. Finally, I'm a podcaster. 
I've had Chris Wright on my podcast. You're going to hear from Chris in a little bit. Uh, uh, I've had uh, Bjorn Lomberg, Michael Schellenberger, Daniel Jurgen, uh, and have great fun. And it is free. Uh, finally, I'm easy to find. I'm on the Google. Power density matters, ladies and gentlemen. It is the reason why our energy and power systems are the way they are. Thank you very much. Thank you.